Hi, we're going to go ahead and continue on with the mask making um, of the pleated mask. Again, we're still working with this pattern that is the uh, pleated nose and chin. And we're just going to go ahead and assemble that in this video. Um, this may get a little long. I'll try and move things along uh, and see if we can go ahead and get a couple masks sewn out here yet. Uh, so we have our lining piece and our front piece and remember when we press these we press them right sides together so the wrong sides of the fabric are showing because we're going to mark our pleats for sewing um, you can go ahead and choose any of your favorite marking tools chalk works best on uh, darker fabrics obviously i've used the um, air soluble pen when I know I am going to just go straight to the sewing machine um, or if it's a little bit darker fabric and I can see a little better. If you are going to mark 20 or 30 or 40 of these and not sew them till tomorrow night, you may want to choose something that's a little bit more uh, longer shelf life than the water soluble uh, pen as it'll disappear. So now that we have our pleats and our nose and our chin marked, we're going to go over to the sewing machine and sew them. Okay, we're going to stick them under the machine. For the first one, I like to start on the fabric and then sew off, starting at the fold. And then I also like to block those stitches at the cut. For the next one, you can go ahead and just keep on sewing. You can sew a whole string of these um, in a row, but you always want to make sure that you're locking those stitches at the fold for sure. Again, I like to just give a little back stitch at the cut, um, just so when we're tugging on these things, they don't, they don't separate. Snip that one off and we'll go ahead and do the chin. with the same technique of sewing on and off Oops. at the fold. And then we have a lining and a outer fabric ready to be sewn together. So now um, you see we have these triangles here that um, some people like to trim those. Um, if you have a scissors handies, you sure can. I don't think it's such a huge deal to just leave them in. It's a, a little bit of a time saver, but now we are going to sew these together, right sides together. So what I like to do is take the, the lining fabric and open it so the wrong side is facing me. And I like to just push down that pleat and kind of give it a little finger press. And then I like to do the same thing with the outer piece um, and give it a little finger press as well. And, and when you're doing this, you'll notice that you have two pleats that you've sewn on the fold side. One is a little bit shorter, that's for the chin, and then one is a little bit longer for the nose. Um, you want to just make sure that you line those up nose to nose and chin to chin when you place these right sides together. So, so just be checking, and I like to usually just give them a little, a little tight pull. Um, one is significantly longer, the nose one is significantly longer, so you'll see that, that those are, are matching. So I like to flip over this triangle on the nose to my right, and when I'm looking at the right side of the outside fabric, I like to flip it over to the left. And just like you're piecing a, a beautiful quilt, uh, you just match up those seams and, and nest them. Um, if you like to pin, now is a good time to pin. I like to move a little bit faster, um, and I know that if I pinch these and shove them under my machine, they're probably not going to go anywhere. And again, close counts in mask making. So we're going to go ahead and sew these right sides together with a quarter inch seam. Remember, when we altered the pattern, we took that half inch seam allowance and, and whacked it off at a quarter inch, and so we could just churn these out. Um, that saves us fabric. We could pinch another another mask front or back out of the, the width of the fabric. 
Um, and so just a quarter inch seam on these. I don't back and, and front, I don't lock the stitch at the cut on this one because um, we'll be sewing right over it here shortly. When I get to that nose uh, pleat seam, I stop with my needle down and then I fix and line up my fabric and kind of give it just a, a, a slight turn just to keep following that straight. Um, you can go ahead and let that triangle piece um, land where it, it wants to and so right over it. So now that we have the top sewn together, we're going to go ahead and sew the bottom together. And I have one of those here with me. Um, and we'll go ahead and show you that. So we have the top, right sides together, just sewed right over those pleats. And we have the chin, same thing, right sides together and sewn right over those pleats. And then the next step is to just turn this tube that we've created, just go ahead and turn it on out. Okay. And then I like to step on over to the iron and just go ahead and press these. So I have one here that's pressed. You'll see the difference when it's not pressed. It's a little loosey-goosey. And then when it's pressed, um, you can push those pleats into themselves uh, and see that one is, is smaller than the other. Again, one is the nose on the top and one is the chin on the bottom. So now we have our, our lining turned uh, right side out with the outside fabric. We have this nice seam at the top where we don't have to put ties across the nose. Um, and then the next step is we're just going to pleat the sides. And so if you step over to the cutting table here, come on with me. If you remember, uh, in the pattern, I mark these pleats. Now, if you're a particular, you're very, uh, want to follow the pattern, you can go ahead and, and pleat these and pin them. Um, I like to just pinch and sew on the sewing machine. So that's what um, I'm going to do. Again, you can mark them with your marking pen if you want to. Um, since close counts, we're gonna go ahead and just take this directly to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to put some side pleats in it. Okay, so now we're at the sewing machine again and we have our out, outer piece and our lining piece. I like to start with the nose going in first um, and the outside fabric up. Um, I like to take five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, and stop with my needle down. My, well, I'll lift your presser foot a little bit and then I just take a little pinch and I shove it with the bottom of the fabric under, under the little plate there. And then I sew right over it and stop again. I do this three times. Little pinch, sew right on over it, little pinch. When you get to the end, you should have about the three inch, the three inches that are uh, asked for in the original pattern. And then you go ahead and do that on the other side, except for I pinch it the other way. So five stitches. And then I kind of mirror what's on this side. If, it, if it's going under, it's not under. I pinch it and throw it under. Pinch it and throw it under. And then pinch and, and push it on under the foot. And that gives us three pleats on each side. So there you have the, the base construction of the mask. It's pretty much all constructed. Now we, all we need to do next is just put on the ties. I'm gonna clean up a few, a few uh, straggling threads. 
and I have a set of ties right here uh, that we made from the earlier video. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. Uh, so what I like to do is measure half, fold it in half, and then and then give it a pinch. And and sometimes I pinch it open just so I know as a basis of where of where middle is. And now because some of our ties aren't gonna be exactly 30 inches, some of them are a little bit shorter, we're gonna go ahead and alter that up an, an inch, um, move the tie from center and move it towards the upper part of the mask. So the upper ties essentially will be a slight bit longer than the lower ties. And so for, for me, the way I do it is I find the nose and um, I usually find the center pleat and if this is the center of my tie, I adjust it to the top and I pin it down. I do pin this step uh, just because when you get to sewing these long ties, it's nice to know that when you get to the mask part, it's where it should be. And so then I do like to pin both sides at the same time because um, I will be sewing from one tie to the other to just finish up this mask. Um, you can go in chain, fac chain fashion and just keep sewing. Um, again, okay, so again, I pinched the center um, and then it gets a little tricky on this side because I still want to move my center towards the nose. So I find the center pleat and I go up towards the, the nose pleat, but because I'm gonna be sewing down this long tail, I'm gonna pin it at the chin side, not the nose side. And so I'll just flap that down, stick a pin in it, and then we're gonna go ahead. I will sew one of these uh, real quick in a fashion that uh, hopefully isn't too noisy for you. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and jump right into, right into the other one. Um, when you're starting, I like to do a, a little bit of a leader just because it's hard to shove the skinny strip under your foot. Um, sometimes my machine eats it uh, and I get this big knot. And um, so if you look in here at the machine, you're gonna see where I line up my strap right inside my presser foot. And once uh, your feet get a hold of it, all I need to do is just guide it. I'm just steering it from here to here. And so what I like to do is just put two fingers down and that fabric's just gonna run like a channel right in between my fingers. So here we go. Pedal to the floor, so on. That was funny. And when I get closer to the mask, I do like to stop every once in a while, make sure that it's, make sure it's tucked in there. Um, and, and make sure that's tucked in all the way to the fold. And then I am going to stop right after I get onto the mask and then tuck the rest of it in the fold of the ties and make sure that it's nice and straight and then sew on. I do know in some of the mask patterns, they are finishing these ends. Um, it's, it's not a big deal to me. So I just kind of sew right off of them, right up to the end. So I can shove my next tie from the other side that I have pinned uh, right under it and, and then keep sewing. We just essentially do this the same thing on both sides uh, and, and then pick up. I'm 
trim your threads. And there you have it. This mask is complete. It is ready to head off to the hospital uh, washroom. I'm gonna go ahead and, and model it for you. I have to take my glasses off so I can get the ties up over my ears. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, obviously it fits right on the nose up over the ears. There's enough ties back here for a little bit of a tie. And again, the tie on the bottom can be a little shorter offset because it's closer to the neck. So, um, I need to get this off here so I can talk. Ugh, I'm stuck in my own mask. Oh, whew, I can breathe. So the reason why I chose this pattern over everything is um, over the, the rounded top ones is uh, I felt that the nose really fit in there nicely. Um, for me, I had a lot of pre-made bias tape that needed to be used and making ties wasn't, wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I hope that this video series helped with the alterations. Um, again, the pattern is great the way it is. Um, and so you can just go ahead and sew from that. Uh, but I wanted to maximize the yardage um, instead of using fat quarters. And I felt like trimming just even that quarter inch off of uh, the pattern would, would help. And, and it has. Um, I stayed up last night cutting quite a few of these. We're going to go ahead and mass produce them here next week out of, out of my sewing room that you've been so pleasantly uh, visiting with. And so um, just want to thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Um, and, you know, we're, we're all in this together and we are all going to get out of it hopefully just one stitch at a time. So keep on sewing, keep on providing masks, using your stash. Um, I'm just using cottons that have been in my stash and I've been looking at because they're so pretty. Um, and for me, it's time for them to go on and have a purpose. So um, carry on and we'll go ahead and thank you. And, and hopefully I'll see you in the store and cut you some fabric when we open back up. Thanks.